Is this going to be a fanboy video? Absolutely not. If it looks like I'm crying, it's because I just sneezed like 10 times. I don't know why I always sneeze when I record videos, but let's get into this video. Oh, here comes another sneeze. Oh my God. So look, um, I started out as an iPhone fanboy. Uh, basically, you couldn't pay me to use an Android phone. I hated everything about Android, not because it's my fault, but because I actually used Android phones before I became an iPhone fanboy. And back then, as many of you know, uh, specifically Samsung, TouchWiz was a pile of garbage. I wasn't ever interested in Android until the S10 came out, and that phone must have flipped a switch in my brain because the moment I saw it being revealed, I was like, I need that. I need that in my life. That was March of 2019, I think, and ever since then, my view on Android has been completely different for the better. I fell in love with the Android experience, but why? Like, what made me, as an Apple fanboy, kind of look into Android and actually going out and purchasing my first Android phone and why I kind of fell in love with it? So in today's video, I'm going to give you guys some of the more simple yet effective things that made me dip my toes into the Android pool, and here I am two years later, uh, I have android phones laying all around the house and even like 10 of them that i sold just because i had too much and i didn't need them anymore from march 2019 to now i've owned basically every pixel phone a lot if not all of the samsung s phones even the the, the three samsung flip phones i've owned as you guys can see the poco phones i've owned redmi phones so many Android phones, so I have experience from every kind of competitive Android manufacturer out there. If you have an iPhone and you're watching this video, maybe thinking about switching over to Android, maybe picking up a second cheaper Android phone just to kind of play around with, this video is for you. The first thing I love about Android but iPhone doesn't have is the simple yet effective feature that allows you to see your notifications on the top of the status bar. So by a show of hands, how many of you iPhone users out there have received a text message or a Snapchat or any other notification and you tell yourself, I'll reply in a little bit, and then a few hours go by and um, you kind of forget to reply. The approach that Android phones do with the status bar and the notifications is simple yet effective. And before we continue, let's have a quick word from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative adventure. With thousands of classes available right at your fingertips, you'll certainly find classes that you like, whether you want to learn how to draw, edit videos, play guitar, or even create cinematic videos with your phone. I recently finished a class from Masik Batista on how to color correct using Final Cut Pro, uh, which basically helped my videos go from this to this. Members get access to thousands of classes, and best of all, many of those classes are under 60 minutes to help you squeeze them into your busy lifestyle. In-person classes can range from a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars, but with Skillshare's premium membership, you'll pay $107 a year, and that's basically $9 a month. That's like, what, three packs of gum? Now, since Skillshare was awesome enough to sponsor today's video, the first thousand people to click the link below in the description will get a trial of Skillshare premium membership for free. So start your learning adventure today. The second feature is home screen customization. Now I know with iPhone, you finally have widgets, but it's still closed down on iPhone. On iPhone, you get two choices of widget size, a block or a rectangle. Let's choose the rectangle because it's around the same size and information as the one on Android. Okay, cool. So you put it on your home screen. Well, what can you do with it? Well, not much. It just acts like a shortcut into the Spotify application. On Android, you can actually interact with the Spotify widget. You can play a song, skip a song, go back a song, and if you want, yeah, you can tap the album cover and it will open into the full Spotify experience. Okay, cool, whatever. Let's say you don't use Spotify. Well, Android has a YouTube widget, which you can basically do the same exact thing. You can even resize it. And on iPhone, you don't even have a YouTube music widget. So Android users like hardcore fanboys were always making fun of iPhones because of the lack of customization due to being so locked down, right? They have you in their palms, right? It's like a jail cell. So Apple finally gave us the ability to customize but not quite. <laughs> Another home screen customization you can do is changing the entire launcher or skin that is on Android. There are tons you can choose from so you can really make your phone your phone. 
Apple also recently introduced picture in picture, which lets you take a video like this from Netflix. For example, you can swipe up on the home screen and <laughs> it's not working. I don't know why. Hang on. Let me, let me give me a second. Okay. You can swipe up and it continues playing on the home screen. Android users, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now this works for basically everything except YouTube. YouTube does not have picture in picture. Now this isn't Apple's problem by any means. It's more of a YouTube Google kind of problem. Uh, they're the ones that can really fix this issue, but I still got to give points where points are earned. Android does have it. And as someone who watches way more YouTube than anything else, I, I kind of miss that feature every time I'm using an iPhone. On Android, if you want your phone to feel fresh and fast, you have something called developer options. You can change so much about your phone that this page alone will take up most of the video. So let's just stick with three things. Window, transition, and animator. If you change them to zero, your phone will open up any application or window without any animations. Is that too fast for you? Well, you can change it to 0.5 and bring back the transitions and animations, but it will be much faster than normal. Are you crazy and maybe want to do 10x? Well, you're more than welcome to, but um, I, I don't really suggest doing that. The developer options on Android phones is so in depth, you can even have an FPS counter on the top for when you're playing games. The thing with Android is that there's always competition. Google is competing against uh, a Samsung. Samsung is competing against Huawei. There's also Xiaomi, Redmi, Poco, and a bunch others. Since all these companies run the same operating system, Android, they just have their own little skin on top. They have to compete pretty hardcore against one another to maybe have Samsung users come to Google Pixel or Google Pixel users come to Samsung. So that's why there are uh, is more competition and each Android phone has a kind of special ability. With iOS, if you want a feature that you don't have, you can't just switch to another iOS phone and magically have that feature, right? No, because it's all run by Apple. With Android phones, for example, if you want expendable storage, there are a ton of Android phones that still have it. There's no real reason for upgrading your phone's internal storage if that phone allows for micro SD card support. You can just buy your own micro SD card and double or even triple your internal storage. And it's so much cheaper than actually upgrading the internal storage from that manufacturer's website. For example, on iPhone, Still, base is 64 gigs, which blows my mind, but whatever, that's another story. Uh, you want to go from 64 gigs to 128 gigs, right, on the iPhone 12. Well, that's an extra 50 bucks. $50 to go up 64 gigs. Well, an extra 64 gigs. Well, let's see how much adding 64 gigs on Android will cost you. Yeah, and you can even get a 512 gigabyte micro SD card for just a little bit more than what Apple charges for an extra 64 gigs. I, I'm, I'm not going to say anything else. Another quick and simple thing I personally love is the ability to quick access settings in the camera application on Android. It's literally a tap away. And here you go. You have a full list of settings, not any watered down version. On iPhone, you have to exit the camera application, open settings, scroll down to camera, and there you finally have it takes more steps than, than than necessary. Apple, just 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 put a settings icon in the camera, dude. I mean, even if people don't really use it as much as you think they would, you still have it for those that do. Android has your back, ladies and gentlemen. If you go to work or you're a student and you depend on alarms waking you up, again, Android has your back. The volumes of multiple things are actually separate. So if you want your ringtone to be quiet enough to hear, but not loud enough to wake the neighborhood, all while having your alarm volume loud enough to wake you up, you can do that. Meanwhile, on iPhone, your alarms and ringtones are actually tied together. Now, funny story, this actually got me late for work one day because I went to sleep with my uh, ringtone volume low, which also ties into my alarm volume, and I didn't wake up. I mean... <laughs> I didn't die, but I, I just, I didn't wake up. I, I, I was late for work. I woke up after. There you go. I should have, I should have just said that. I woke up after I was supposed to come into work. I didn't die. Now, look, there are many more reasons why you should probably consider using Android over iOS. But um, if I labeled all those things in this video, I, this video would be over three hours long. And I don't think you guys want to watch a three hour long YouTube video. This video alone is very long. And I just, I just gave you guys like the most simple things ever. Uh, but there are also reasons why you should probably either stick to iOS or maybe if you're an Android user, switch to iOS. If you guys want me to make a video on that, definitely let me know in the comments below. 
And if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you made it this far in the video, leave an emoji of your favorite animal. There you go. That'll confuse every other person that didn't make it this far. You will feel special. Congratulations. So this was Mark from Mark's Tech. Adios.